good morning everyone my job today is to show you how to calculate sagittal alignment in a adult deformity in six steps followed by how to simulate a pso in four steps so here we go so the import window you can bring in any image preferably a dicom image if you want to measure the centimeters and all but it doesn't stop you from importing jpegs also for jpegs you will have to calibrate especially if your jpeg has that small uh, the size, uh, size uh, markings on the side then only you can calibrate it but here we have used a dicom image second is the database and the third is where you do the measurement database is the collection of all, all your cases so here i'm going to import this uh, case into my database and that's the uh, case of full spine dicom image lateral view and uh, then this measured window shows up if you double click on it and that's your image on the side you have these various tools uh, to measure cob angles and sva and all those things the first thing you have to do with uh, a sagittal image is uh, you know set the age uh, because that's very important all these measurements uh, and i'll come to that later but here the first part i am doing is setting the age of this patient Uh, at 60, and then telling the software which part of the image is anterior and which is posterior. So, you know, this is anterior and this is posterior because that the software needs to know that. And then you go to this sagittal wizard tool, and that's the six steps. So this wizard tells you what to do. Just follow this uh, help here, and then do what the software tells you do to do. So the first is to mark out the femoral heads. Here, this is telling you how to do it. so you know zoom in the picture and mark in the femoral heads that's it first done then second step is s1 end plate superior end plate you mark the superior end plate then mark the upper end plate of l1 that's done this is a little bit tricky sometimes if you don't have a good x ray the upper end plate of t1 and then you can stop your uh, uh, planning at any stage if you just want t1 and don't want to go to c2 you double click and stop there but i have here just for the sake of showing gone to c2 and then it automatically marks out these end plates what you have to do is adjust them wherever they you think they are off and it automatically does all that and you know gets all the alignments uh, done for you and that's the sixth <coughs> sixth step you know? so that takes care of all the things that the software needs uh to show you uh show you all the measurements then uh, you know if you want you can also draw the sva mark the center of the c7 and then go down and mark the posterior superior corner of s1 and then it automatically gives you that this value now i'm just increasing the font for you to show it's about 10, 13 cm anterior and then it shows all these sagittal parameters pelvic tilt incidence and lumbar lordosis to you on the side and here you can you know uh, uh, go back and then look at the measurements here the measurements uh, if on the lower part of these tools there is this window here called the measurements and if you expand it you'll see really in detail all the different measurements uh, that the software has calculated for you you know uh, many of them you may not use but if you are unsure what the measurements are there is this i icon here so that's the pelvic tilt that is drawn if you click on the pi the pi is drawn the lumbar lordosis is drawn so it has a good way of uh, you know showing that angle to you on the uh, on the x ray and then it also has this help on the side if you click on the normal values it will bring up window and describe what pi pi ll mismatch means what are the normative values and what what it what does it correlate with or it doesn't so that's a good help to have right there inside the other thing you will notice that all these values are color coded and they are color coded because the software already incorporates what the normative values are for the age we know that the sagittal alignment parameters are not the same for everyone and depending on the age they'll change so as a 60 year old these parameters which are in red are off if you go to srs uh, parameters then only these ones will be red but if you go to the normative data it shows which ones are in in the red for you so that way you can do age appropriate uh, you know assessment 
uh, of uh, of this sagittal alignment. So that is that, and you know, when you here I am toggling what the normative alignment would be. So when I toggle that, the software tells you what normal alignment of the spine should look like. That's the blue line here. So you know, this patient is uh, forward tilted. Now the next thing you can do here is like how to correct this. So that's the planning. Now if I if I have to say, let's say we'll do a PSO at L3. So you can right click there and say, I want a PSO and L3. It draws a wedge here on the side. And then you can click on simulate here. It cuts the X-ray for that angle wedge. And then if you'll notice, all these parameters have changed. Now these parameters have changed because of that wedge that you have removed on the X-ray. So, you know, you see the pelvic tilt has reduced. And then if you go back here now, this pelvic tilt is not in the ideal range for this patient. It's 26. I want to make it below 20. So I'm going to change this 25 degree wedge of the PSO on, on, the, uh, on, on here on this edge by increasing that wedge. And you'll see automatically this thing is changing. These values change. So pelvic tilt has reduced. PLL mismatch has reduced. SVA has come back from 13 centimeter to you know, almost five centimeters. So you can play around with this kind of a wedge tool and see what a PSO at L3 would look like in this patient, right? So that's it. But in, for this patient, PSO is really not necessary. So because I know from the preoperative flexion extension X-rays, those adjacent discs are pretty mobile. So I'm going to see how a T-lift looks like if I do a T-lift above and below. So here you can, so this is, I am deleted that. The first step you will do, I've gone back to this original position. The first step you will do is rotate this X-ray uh, to a point where your pelvic tilt becomes 20 degrees. You know, so I've rotated this X-ray by the software. And why 20 degrees? Because you'll notice here that that alignment has become like a green window, which says that 20 degrees is okay for this age. And, and you know, my target is having a pelvic tilt of 20 degrees. So I stop here. Now, basically, this means that I have removed the uh, pelvic comp uh, compensation this patient has. And you'll notice that the SV has changed from 13 centimeters to almost 30 centimeters. Now, my job is to get this back on to the sacrum, get the C7 back by putting in uh, T-lift cages at L2, L3, and L3, L and L4, L5, because this area is fused previously. So there's this cage tool here. I'm going to draw a T-lift cage here at L4, L5, and I'm going to put a lordotic T-lift cage, so I'm going to shape it into a lordosis uh, position by doing those, changing those nodes here like I'm doing. And then I go back to this measurement tools, and then I click on this checkbox, and then it, uh, at using that checkbox basically means that you're simulating that cage. So it automatically creates that wedge out, and then you see that the pelvic tilt has changed to 20 degrees and then I want to kind of fine tune it then I'm going to change that and then try to get this uh, PILL mismatch you know mm -hmm. low the SV has come back you know pelvic tilt is 20 so I'm happy with these and I know that if I use these lordotic cages at these two places I'm going to get my correction so I don't need a PSO for this and you know then you can go back and then check at the normative you see those red ones which were there before the simulation, after the simulation has has become green. At least the ones that you are focused on the pelvic tilt. The SVA still is uh, out of range, so I'm maybe going to make it more lordotic. Now the SVA is four centimeters, and I'm fine with that. So, you know, then my job is to kind of recreate this uh, uh, during surgery, and that's the wedge that you'll have to remove. I'll just take a minute more. Uh, I'll go fast forward. So if if you go back and I will, this is how the post-operative X-ray looks like. And let's see, go to the PILL alignment wizard and see what we achieved on the post-operative X-ray. So the same way, you know, I'm telling the patient, uh, software the, what is anterior and posterior. I'm going to draw the femoral heads here. It's not sure slider but essentially it's the same step s1 and uh, l1 end plate and then it shows you all these parameters here and
and you know this is how it look it's it, it's in orange because it's like not 20 degrees exactly but it's just 4 degrees up and that's kind of acceptable so mm. that's how you know you can plan your t lifts at above level and get get a good alignment I just I have one more case to show you, similar one, but this is a PSO. So you know, 67 year old previously fused here, you know, fixed sagittal imbalance. All these discs are fused and solid. Obviously, you can't get a T lift and get this patient back. You have to do a PSO. So step one is measure everything. Step two is rotate the X-ray so that your pelvic tilt goes to 20 degrees which is for this patient 20 degrees is okay because of this the SVA goes forward then then assess how much wedge is going to be required by measuring this angle the C7 to the apex of your PSO to where you want the C7 to be that angle is 46 degree so I'm going to put a 46 degree wedge PSO here and then the last step is I'm going to ask the software to simulate it and then see how all the parameters look like so this is the last step where you you know clicked it this was before the simulation this is after the simulation intra you know you try to recreate that wedge of 46 degree you can measure this on the cm itself this angle to be at least 40 46 degree this is the intra op x-ray and then you know this is the post op x-ray and this is what the pre op x-ray was right and this is the simulated <laughs> Uh, simulated PSO and this is the actual PSO and you know all these values match so we could achieve what was planned.